What's up, everyone? Today, we're diving deep into Tulsa King Season 2, Episode 5, titled Tilting at Windmills. This episode serves up a wild mix of family drama, criminal power moves, and of course, a heavy dose of Dwight Manfredi's old-school mafia charm. But here's the real question. Is Dwight still in control of his empire, or are we starting to see cracks in his reign? Stick around as we break down all the twists, explore the deeper character dynamics, and speculate on where this story is headed. Trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming up next. In this episode, we see Dwight fighting on multiple fronts. His criminal ventures, family dynamics, and even a budding romance. Tilting at windmills isn't just business as usual, it's personal. And when things get personal for Dwight, the stakes skyrocket. We see cracks forming in his usually cool and calculated demeanor, which makes the episode that much more intriguing. But first, let's talk about Dwight's family situation, specifically that awkward school scene that highlights the generational and cultural divide between Dwight and his loved ones. Spoiler alert, things get real fast. The family conflict, Dwight's outdated values. The episode opens with Dwight taking his daughter, Tina, and his grandkids to their new progressive school, and boy, does it hit differently. It's almost comedic how out of place Dwight seems in this environment. He's a man of tough, old-school mafia values, so seeing him in a setting that promotes nurturing and creativity immediately sets the stage for tension. What's, what's fascinating here is that this scene isn't just for laughs. It's symbolic. The world Dwight comes from is brutal, where survival means knowing how to defend yourself both physically and mentally. For him, teaching kids how to be tough isn't an option. It's a necessity. This school moment subtly hints at Dwight's inner conflict. While he's desperately trying to reconnect with his family, his mafia mentality keeps driving a wedge between him and the modern values they embrace. It's a brilliant setup to show us that Dwight, though he's the general in the streets, is still struggling to find his place in his personal life. His daughter, Tina, and sister, Joanne, represent a more hopeful and compassionate worldview, something Dwight doesn't entirely understand. This clash isn't just a funny generational difference, it reveals a core theme of the episode. Dwight's struggle to adapt to a world that has seemingly outgrown his rough, mafia-edged approach. Shifting gears to business, power plays, and rivalries. Now shifting from the family drama, let's talk business, because this is where the criminal underworld stuff really kicks into gear. Dwight's big move this episode? Securing a wind farm as part of his empire-building efforts. On the surface, it looks like just another business venture, but in reality, it's much more than that. This wind farm is a power play, literally and figuratively. Dwight's making a move to diversify his assets and expand his reach. But of course, nothing comes without complications in Tulsa King. Cal Thresher, the rival who won't back down. Cal Thresher, a local businessman who had his eye on that wind farm, is furious. But here's where the stakes elevate. Cal isn't just upset about losing the deal. His frustrations run deeper, especially since Dwight's been getting cozy with Margaret, the owner of the land. So what could have been a simple business rivalry morphs into something far more personal. This rivalry with Cal adds layers to the narrative. Um, it's not just about Dwight expanding his empire. He's also stepping on toes and getting pulled into a dangerous love triangle. And Cal, frustrated and desperate, reaches out to the Kansas City mob for help. This could have been a game changer, but here's the twist. Bill Bevilacqua, a major player in the Kansas City mob, declines to get involved. This small moment says a lot about Dwight's growing reputation. He's no longer just a problem for local players. Even the big mob bosses are cautious of getting on his bad side. Mob politics and suspense, a dangerous meeting on the horizon. Let's dive into mob politics for a second. Chicky, Dwight's old associate, arranges a sit-down between Dwight and Bevlock in Atlanta to supposedly negotiate peace. But here's the kicker. Can Chicky be trusted? The tension here is palpable. We're left wondering if this is a genuine attempt at peace or a trap to get Dwight out of the picture. This setup is classic mafia tension. Backroom deals, hidden agendas, and the looming question of whether Dwight is walking straight into a setup. While Dwight's confidence is one of his strongest traits, could it also blind him to the danger that's right in front of him? The stakes just keep rising, and the suspense is masterfully built as the episode inches toward an explosive confrontation. Internal tensions, cracks within Dwight's crew. 
Simultaneously, we start seeing cracks within Dwight's own crew. Tyson, his ever loyal right hand man, pushes for immediate retaliation against their enemies, but Dwight preaches patience. This clash between impulsive action and calculated strategy brings an interesting dynamic to the forefront. Dwight's long term mafia experience has taught him that sometimes waiting is the best move, but his crew's growing frustration hints that not everyone is willing to play the long game. Could this internal discord spell trouble for Dwight just when he needs his crew to be united? It's a crucial point, and we can't help but wonder if this internal tension will weaken his grip when the real storm hits. Climax and action, the big showdown. Finally, the tension reaches its peak when Cal sends his goons to sabotage Dwight's wind farm. This is the big action set piece of the episode, and it does not disappoint. The confrontation is brutal with Dwight and his crew stepping up to defend what's theirs. Baseball bats, fists flying. This scene is a reminder that while Dwight is building his empire with strategy, he's still not afraid to get his hands dirty when it counts. This action sequence isn't just a physical showdown, it's a powerful statement. Dwight is sending a clear message to his enemies. He's not backing down, no matter how big the threat. And despite some of the underlying tensions within his crew, they remain fiercely loyal to him during this crucial moment. It's a pivotal scene that reinforces Dwight's dominance, but at the same time, it shows us just how far his enemies are willing to go to take him down. Romance and complications, a love triangle with high stakes. And of course, amid all the chaos, Dwight still finds time for romance. His relationship with Margaret continues to grow, and in classic Dwight fashion, he manages to use a bottle of rare champagne, ironically sent by Cal Thresher, to impress her. This adds a cheeky layer to Dwight's character, reminding us that he can flip the script on his enemies, even in his personal life. But this isn't just a romantic subplot. Dwight's involvement with Margaret complicates things even more. As their relationship deepens, the stakes between him and Cal get even higher. This isn't just about business anymore, it's personal, and that makes it all the more dangerous. Finally, let's not forget the episode's title, Tilting at Windmills. It's a direct reference to Don Quixote, and it perfectly captures Dwight's current predicament. Just like Don Quixote, Dwight is fighting battles that may seem unwinnable. He's trying to build a new empire in Tulsa, while his old mafia ties and the modern world pull him in different directions. The deeper themes of legacy, change, and survival come to the forefront, making this more than just a mob story. It's a tale of one man struggling to adapt to a world that's rapidly shifting around him. So, what do you think? Is Dwight still in control, or is his empire starting to crumble from within? Drop your predictions in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on what's coming next. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. And if you are new to our channel, subscribe and click the bell icon so you do not miss out on our latest videos.